chemical studies of Copernicium has already about more than 15 uh, years of history. Hello everyone! I haven't published videos about transuranium elements in a long time. Now it's a good time for us to learn about a few more extremely hard to produce and radioactive metals. And today we're going to talk about Copernicium. Copernicium was first created in 1996 at the GSI, not far away from the city of Darmstadt. Copernicium was the last element discovered at this university in 1996, at which five more elements had to be discovered in 15 years. This metal was created by bombarding atoms of lead with ions of zinc accelerated to one-tenth of the speed of light through a linear accelerator named Unilac. About 5 billion flying ions of isotope zinc-70 were fired at high speed as the motionless led to 108 target in the form of a thin foil. As a result of combining nuclear of the two elements, there was produced an atom of copernicium with a mass number of 277 and also one free neutron. Don't be misled into thinking that upon each collision of ions there formed atoms of new elements. In reality, it happened very rarely, approximately once in a week, because the probability of nuclear collision upon obtaining such a heavy element as copernicium is extremely low. When the new elements was produced, it had to be separated from the waste particles chasing it, consisting of remnants of lead and zinc atoms. A special magnet filter was used to separate the freshly obtained copernicium from waste ions by dividing the stream of flying elements based on the speeds different particles move at. Thus, the sensitivity of the detector increases, which determines whether the atoms of a new element hit it or not. However, in 1996 this actually happened. Another reason why Copernicum atoms are so unlikely to form is that the speed at which zinc atoms are fired has to be very precise as well as the angle at which they are fired as the lead target in order for the atoms to collide. If the speed is too high, the zinc atoms will simply crush the lead atom, whereas if the speed is too low, there will be no collision, because the nuclei of both atoms have the same charge and simply repel each other. Freshly obtained Copernicum 277 atom exists only 0.7 millisecond, then it radiates an alpha particle and becomes Darmstadtium-277 isotope, which keeps breaking down even further, turning into fermium. Thus, Copernicum can be used to produce other transuranium elements, for instance such as long-lived Hysium-279 isotope, which scientists first ran chemistry experiments with back in 1996. After the discovery of the element with atomic number 112, it was decided to give it a temporary name Unubnium, which had been used until 2010, when the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry adopted a new chemical symbol and named Copernicum, naming the element after a Polish astronomer, Nicolaus Copernicus. Since it is very challenging to obtain a sufficient amount of Copernicum atoms, for running experiments, scientists resorted to a traditional method of determining chemical and physical properties, that is, to calculation. According to a computer model, Copernicum is supposed to be a very volatile element because its volatility and ability to vaporize at room temperature is much greater than that of mercury. According to scientists' calculations, Properties of Copernicum are actually very similar to those of radon, because it is just as radioactive and is extremely chemically inert or much less active than other elements belonging to the group 12, such as cadmium and mercury to be precise. At room temperature Copernicum is supposed to be gaseous, because its boiling point is about minus 120 degrees Celsius. Besides, According to some assumptions, 
This gaseous metal is supposed to be one of the most inert metals on Earth and be less chemically active than gold. In order to check their calculations, scientists run experiments to study the properties of this metal and determine how different its volatility is from that of mercury. It is known that mercury can wet some metals well, such as gold and copper. To check that freshly obtained copernicium atom was passed through a thin detector covered in gold and also cooled with liquid nitrogen from outside. They found out that copernicium is really more volatile than mercury because it left in the detector much longer than mercury before sticking to gold. Besides being extremely chemically inert, copernicium can also be considered a very expensive metal because of the slow speed of its production, there can only be obtained one item of this element a week. If to do the math, during this whole period, there needs to be used a lot of energy to keep the accelerator and all its systems running. That is why the cost of one gram of copernicium roughly equals the budget of whole world, which makes it almost the most expensive metal on Earth. Unfortunately, almost like all other transuranium elements, today copernicium doesn't have many practical applications. All the researchers on it were rather basic, could only reveal to the humanity some secrets of the matter and also lay the groundwork for further researches.